clarify things to myself, um, about myself, about the world around me. But it's also a way to clarify that to other people because I think people do look for a connection in other people's writing. And that connection could be a connection around place, people, memory, things that you know people can relate across. I'm currently on the Young People's Poet Laureate of London tour, which um, travels around different uh, boroughs in London and connects with the young people there. But more than that, it's a way to sort of um, interact and engage with young people in this area to get them to speak about their own lives and speak about their own um, identities and sort of the ways in which they relate to Brent. To whom it may concern, don't you give up on your dreams. I pray that when the feeling's low, you play this song upon repeat. I know that you can achieve anything that you believe and life reflects anything that you perceive it to be and though the world make it seem that there ain't beauty just struggle that there ain't beauty just flaws and many flaws are above you can't no one understand you can somebody relate but them kind of things just make for better stories today and as the years go by tears go by ain't it funny how your peers disappear though i really hope you listen but just for you the song i've written and if you skip it still love though. Dreams are kicking ball like the canyon, a kid in a dream. And when he grew old, life weren't all that it seemed. But keep doing your thing, today's a better. And if I could give you just one thing, it'll be forever. To whom it may concern. Genti and I'm originally from Albania. Uh, I came into this country four years ago and since then I've been living in Brent uh, in North Wembley. When I first came I wasn't speaking English and because I came during the May and the school was about to finish I had three months of summer to improve my English so I decided to come every day at Wembley Library and teach myself English six days a week for about eight hours. I think it went great because when I went to school in September, I was put into a class where people could speak English pretty well and I was happy about that. So I, I would say that was my first achievement uh, in Brent. St. Raphael's estate, which is in Brent. I used to live in Wills then, next to Wills before the centre. And yeah, so that's where the athletics and sports kicked off for me. Age 13, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, that changed a lot. I found my route, I found athletics, I found sports. It doesn't have to be athletic, but yeah, this is what I found. 
took that on board, took that to a different level. Now I represent Great Britain as well as Team England. Been to the Commonwealth Games this year. So they didn't perform as I wanted to, but hey, who always has that opportunity, you know what I mean? So, because I always, always loved sport, so anything, anything, if I, was, if I was in trouble or whatnot, I'll just turn to sports. son, autistic boy, he's um, 13. Um, about three years ago, I was offered short breaks here at the Short Break Centre. And although it was a bit of a difficult thing for me to start doing, um, I'm so glad I did do it because it's been really amazing, uh, not for only myself and my family, to have a break. My son's actually sort of uh, got a bit more independence with not having me around, so when he's coming here, he's actually having to dress himself or try to dress himself more and clean his teeth. Just little things that might not mean a lot to some people, but it it's, means a lot to us. To have a short break centre like this uh, is very important, I think, for special needs families. Hey, it's bothering you. Sorry, Troy. Good boy. Good Fantastic. Is that better? There's so much to say about this place. The food is nice. We get, we get, we get to play outside. And you play basketball. We, we do fun, activi fun activities. We play hide and seek and we play... Knockout zone. And we can also play with the toys. And it's super fun. I've been with NCS for two weeks and it's been really fun. We did outdoor activities for the first week, working on our team building skills and our physical skills. And then the second week it was more ideas and speech and how to act in the big world to stand out and not fit in. I came to NCS because my siblings did it and they told me how good it was. And I remember my brother was really shy and when he came back he was like a different person. So I, I was sort of forced to do it, but I was happy that I did it anyways because like it was like it's pretty much a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's one of them ones like you will regret if you don't do it. So I think that's why I done it, and it was good fun. It's an experience not to miss out on because it actually does shape you for the real world and like going to different schools, you know, like finishing GCC and going to different schools, you're gonna have to meet new people, and I think NCS like really helped me come up my comfort zone. As a young person in Brent, in five years, I'd like to see more programs like this happening when it comes to young people. Hi, I'm Priya from the Youth Stories of Brent, and today I'm here with Claire, who is the Senior Manager of the Young Brent Foundation. Um, so Claire, what kind of organisations and charities do you work with? So the Young Brent Foundation is an infrastructure organisation, so we have um, a number of member organisations from small grassroots, individuals joining in our network, as well as large registered charities, all working together to support young people in Brent. Uh, can you name drop any charities or any charities? Oh, I can. <laughs> so we have um, Sport at the Heart, we have Zest of Mind, uh, we have Horn Stars, we have the US Charitable Trust, um, we've got uniform services like the Cadets, the Scouts, so much happening in Brent, I bet you didn't know all of that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, when it comes to things like the Cadets specifically, do you work a lot with um, young people, like? by pulling them out of like schools or is it just do you, is there like a whole strategy with trying to get young people from the community itself? Definitely. So there's a lot of good practice taking place in schools, but what the Young Brent Foundation are particularly interested in is that extended wraparound care, after school support, holiday, holiday support, um, you name it, that kind of extracurricular activity that also has a very valuable um, place in a young person's life. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Nari. I am the director of an organisation called Sport at the Heart. We are a community sports development charity working with whole families to create opportunities to be active, get connected with their communities and um, opportunities for volunteering and the development of workplace skills for young people. My name is Matt, I am 24 years old. I was born and bred in Wolves and Green, that's within Bread. I work, currently work at Sport at the Heart now. My passion is it's always been sport, mainly football. As a child, I'd always have a ball at my feet. Football, football, football. But unfortunately, because of, how, of the support that I had, it was always there. My mum, my dad always gave me the support. But sometimes it was always out of reach. It was always somewhere else. It was never within breath. It was in breath, but we on the outskirts. An 11 year old trying to get to the outskirts of Brent by himself wasn't there. So that's what really affected me when I got dropped in been working as a sports coach, giving opportunities closer to where I feel there aren't any. So that's where also the sport at heart, they have their ambitions to bring lots of sports activities to those that aren't able to do so. My name is Nurameen, I work here at Sifra. I help manage the youth committee and just day to day running of Sifra Food Bank. So what we do is we offer emergency food parcels to people who are in quite vulnerable situations. This year we will be running for five years in Brent. We have a community kitchen that we run every Friday and that's open to everyone in the community. We have our volunteers who prepare the food but also serve it to them. We set the tables and we help allocate food and drink. We even talk to some of the people who visit here just to keep them entertained and when they're eating and stuff we sit with them sometimes and have nice conversations. We managed to learn a lot about the people here and what they do and from there we decided to get involved even more and help out for ourselves. I live across the road so they're my neighbours. Um, come around give them a cup of sugar, anything they need. Any help for the tea, you know? <laughs> I'm here, I'm your guy. Me personally, it's helped me um, develop responsibility for other people. I come here like every day and I help out for like a couple hours. It's not that much of a hassle just to come in and try to contribute, so it's like a good couple hours. It's better for people to understand the positive um, aspects of where we come from instead of just um, remembering the negativity that comes with being from St. Raph's. My name is Rico and I'm 21 and I live in Brent. My story is about a stabbing. I just went out with my little cousin to go out and just get a quick meal to eat and I bumped into some, to some criminals who chased me down. I don't know why, but I got caught and then basically I got stabbed. Stabbed like nine to 10 times, which was a really tragic time for me. On that day, I had to go to the hospital just so many doctors, all I could remember is so many doctors around me. It was just such a blare on that night, but I'm just so grateful I'm still here to this day. I had so many operations I had to go through, so that was such a difficult time for me too. I was really shocked, to be honest. At the start when I was in the hospital, I was shocked because I've just never experienced anything like this in my life, especially me, because I ain't into any gangs or I don't do any criminal activities. It just, it just lets you know that the streets ain't really safe, when, even when you think it is. Eventually my temporary injury went away a couple of weeks ago and to this day I feel better, I've been healing good, I've been just doing good. 
It makes me want to tell my story for the youth out there. Never keep your emotions in. Always express your emotions to whatever you feel comfortable with. Even if it's not your parents, at least go to a <laughs> go to a counselor and speak about what you need to speak about. What I realized is that like actually Brent instilled in me things that were useful for the rest of my life. What were they? That I was able to walk into a room of people of multicultural backgrounds and able to like understand the nuance between each people, right? But these people couldn't do that because they never had that diverse background. They came from very similar backgrounds and Brent kind of taught me that lesson very quickly and I never really appreciated that until I was older. So now that I look back at my career and I deal with people from different cultures, I travel a lot, but Brent gave me that initial learning process to be like, if you can walk a room and there's like 10 different cultures being represented, what is the common denominator between everybody? And that's what Brent taught me at a very young age that I never even realized. Hey, I'm Maria Idrissi, I'm 25 and I grew up in Brent. I'm a model now, but I wasn't a plan originally. Uh, I actually got scouted in Westfield. I was just managing a children's shop part-time, finished university, I did English and history. And a lady came up to me and was like, oh, can I take a picture of you? And I was like, okay, why? <laughs> she said, oh, sorry, I'm a casting director and uh, we just want to represent more diversity and H&M are looking for a model in a hijab. So it'll be great to have you on my books. I thought, okay, cool. Even though I wasn't trying to be a model, um, thought why not I'll probably make more money doing a day shooting than here so I went for it and completely forgot about the campaign I was in the ad for like two seconds and then the day it came out I just remember like headlines and BBC trying to contact me to interview me about being the first hijab wearing model in the world and I was I was shocked because it was 2015 and I thought only now we're getting a woman in a hijab represented in the meat like in, in a fashion campaign. I don't see many people that look like me in film, on TV, just on the screen in general. And growing up, it's really hard. The closest, the closest thing I could relate to was Jasmine from Aladdin, who's not even a real human. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, the new path I'm on. And I think my message ultimately is, even though I started off as a model and it wasn't the plan, I never forgot my own personal plan. Sometimes things come as obstacles and sometimes things come, things come as opportunities. So it's just about differentiating the two and I was able to take that opportunity in fashion. I enjoy what I do, but at the same time, I don't want to forget originally what my path was and everything happens for a reason. Thank you.